So in the last video I put out, I talked about the Tetralemma, this figure from ancient Indian logic that enables us to play around with different positions of mind and break down rigidity in thought structures and in the belief sets that generate our uh, toxic trances and identity trances and this kind of thing. If you haven't seen the video, watch the video uh, and it will make, make more sense to you. I also shared this idea from Patanjali, or Patanjali, which uh, goes something along the lines of the surest path to enlightenment is through the capacity to hold two contradictory ideas in consciousness long enough for a higher order of thinking to emerge from that. So this is, you know, this is a ancient wisdom concept, if you like. And I think it's a very, very powerful thing. I think normally in our everyday uh, analytical left brain state of mind, we don't do this. We're always playing this off against that. It's this or it's that. It's up or it's down. It's in or it's out. It's black or it's white. And, and it channels us in particular ways and makes us very rigid in our thinking. And many of our reality tunnels are held in place by this. So it's very useful to be able to expand people out and draw them into a state of mind where they can process opposites and hold them together in this way and to experience what emerges from them. Now, the interesting thing for me is that if you take the work of Milton Erickson, which is a very, very rich body of work, uh, people are still unpicking what the wizard in the desert was doing, trying to figure out all the different nuances and stuff like that. But one of the aspects that Erickson seemed to have in the mix was just this, just exactly this, uh, which is an interesting thing because he's, he's probably not coming from that tradition at all, probably not heard of the Tetralemma or familiar with uh, Patanjali's work of Patanjali. Um, but yet, somehow, as is often the case with Erickson, he seems to be able to tap into this deeper wisdom and use it. Use it creatively, use it effectively, use it to leverage change in people. And so you hear it in some of his ideas and concepts and language patterns. The classic one that you often hear is you can forget to remember and remember to forget. He's bringing opposites together. Ideas like, isn't it interesting how you can feel comfortable even about those uncomfortable moments now? You know, bringing these opposites together. And you can read about this in, um, in Bill O'Hanlon's book, William Hudson O'Hanlon's book, Tap Roots. It, it covers some of this in there. It's, that, incidentally, just as an aside, that's my favorite book on, uh, on Milton Erickson's stuff. I really love it. Very clear breakdown. But I was first introduced to this idea by Stephen Gilligan. Now, if you don't know Stephen Gilligan, he is a guy who was part of the original NLP team, but he, he didn't sort of stick in that crowd. He went over and ended up being a, a student of Milton Erickson for a number of years and learning very deeply from Milton Erickson. And it's developed beyond what he learned from Milton Erickson, brought his own approaches in. But one of the things that he got from Erickson, which I learned from Stephen Gilligan, was this idea of bringing opposites together and sitting them in the same space so as to generate, to kind of push the mind out of its left brain operating and into a much more right brain space, out of its narrow objective space into an open focus space, into a generative trance state. And the way Erickson used to do this, as I am told, as I have been taught, was to bring these things together in, in, a, in a way like this. He would say, and you can be conscious and you can be unconscious. And isn't it nice to know that you can enjoy both of those at the same time? And you can be a part of and you can be apart from. And isn't it nice to know that you can enjoy both of those at the same time? Now, I love this. I love how he draws these opposites together. And what do you do with that? What can you do with that? If you took Elman's idea of the critical faculty, which is this left brain analytical crunch, crunch, crunch mode, it has to go offline. 
it has to go offline, which creates a different kind of mind space for a different kind of processing that starts to dissolve away the kind of either or black and white, this or that distinctions, which generally speaking hold people's reality tunnels in place. So I love what Ericsson's doing here. I love how he's using this to move people's minds into a more generative form of processing and at the same time break down limiting black or white oppositional ideas. That's exactly what opens up the space for new structures to emerge. You know, exactly as Patanjali is saying, or Patanjali, you know, the surest path to enlightenment is through the capacity to hold two opposites within consciousness long enough for a higher order to emerge. So I love what Erickson was doing with that. Um, and I incorporate that in, in the kind of conversational work that I do. And I incorporate that in the work that I do with the Tetralemma. Because there's a flip side to it as well, which Erickson didn't do, which is bringing the two, the two negatives into the same space, which you can do in exactly the same way, in that exact same Ericksonian way. Uh, and that's that's a way in which using the tetralemma can become very interesting, uh, particularly within a conversational hypnosis format. Now, in the in the next video that I put out, I'm going to go into something fun with this idea, this idea of bringing opposites together to create something interesting, and I'm going to tell you about an experimental hand stick that I was recently playing around with and turned out to be very successful which utilizes this very idea of bringing opposites together to create something and what, what is being created here is a hand stick or anything else that potentially emerges from it. So in the next video I'm going to tell you about that. Oh and as a PS to that if you want to get on the Tetralemma workshop um, we're covering a lot of this stuff deeply how you can use this in transformative work Check out the information page. Depending on where you're watching this, there'll either be a link below the video or perhaps above the video, or you may even be watching this on uh, Transforming Realities with the Tetralemma Workshop live page. Okay, so looking forward to seeing you in the next video where we're going to have fun with that handstick idea.